going to share a three-day itinerary for visiting the Mount Fuji Five Lakes area and city of Fujiyoshida. Plus, I'll show you how to use the Mount Fuji Pass for unlimited transportation in the area. The Mount Fuji Pass also allows for admission or special discounts to attractions, allowing for seamless sightseeing. This itinerary will take us sightseeing on and around Lake Kawaguchi, Lake Yamanaka, and Lake Sai. You may want to add in Lake Motosu if you're visiting during the Shibazakura Festival in April and May. For information on how to get to the Mount Fuji area, please watch our separate video on how to get from Tokyo to Mount Fuji. Personally, we took the Fuji Excursion Limited Express train from Shinjuku Station in Tokyo, which goes all the way to Kawaguchiko Station. The Mount Fuji Pass is available for purchase at seven counters, located at Otsuki Station, Kawaguchiko Station, Mount Fuji Station, Asahigaoka Bus Terminal, Gotemba Station, Mishima Station, and Fujinomiya Station. Or you can purchase online and pick up your physical pass once you get to the Mount Fuji Five Lakes area. I'll link to that option below. Be sure to bring your passport when purchasing or picking up the Mount Fuji Pass, as it is only available for foreign tourists. You can opt for either a one, two, or three-day pass. Adult prices are for ages 12 years old and up. Child prices are for ages six to 11 years old. Children five years old and younger can ride buses and trains for free with a paying adult. The one-day pass costs 5,500 yen. Two-day pass is 8,000 yen. And three-day pass is 10,000 yen which is currently about US $65. Once you are within the Mount Fuji Five Lakes area, the Mount Fuji Pass offers unlimited rides on trains and buses as shown on this map. This includes local trains on the Fuji-Q Railway, which runs from Otsuki Station to Kawaguchiko Station. Popular tourist sites along this train route include the Choreito Pagoda, which is uphill from Shimoyoshida Station as well as the Fuji-Q Highlands Amusement Park. If you wish to ride on a limited express train, you must pay an additional limited express fee in addition to having the pass. Only the base fare is covered by the pass. If you have a JR Pass, keep in mind that the Fuji-Q Railway is not covered by the JR Pass, as it is owned and operated by a separate company, not the JR Group. To board a local train, simply show your Mount Fuji Pass while walking through the ticket gate. If you're not using the pass, you can tap your IC card when entering and exiting the stations. The Mount Fuji Pass covers the omnibus sightseeing lines. The red line bound for Lake Kawaguchi, the blue line bound for Motosuko, and the green line bound for Saiko, as well as the other bus lines shown on this map. Please keep in mind that many of the climber buses bound for Mount Fuji 5th Station only run seasonally when Mount Fuji is open for climbing from early July to early September. For riding buses, instead of paying by IC card or cash, simply show your Mount Fuji Pass to the driver as you exit the bus through the front door. If you don't have the Mount Fuji Pass and you're paying by IC card, tap your card when you enter at the middle of the bus and then tap it again when you exit at the front of the bus. That's how they keep track of where you got on and where you got off. If you pay by cash, make sure you have small change on hand so you don't delay other passengers getting off the bus. When you hear your stop announced is coming up next, please push the stop button. As a side note, please do not bring large suitcases onto local and sightseeing buses. The omnibus sightseeing lines have no room allocated for luggage. There is not even an overhead rack. It's best to only bring on board what you can fit at your feet or on your lap. You can watch our separate videos on how to store luggage in Tokyo or forward it to your next destination. If you'd like to use Yamato Transport to Kuroneko your luggage to your next destination, there is a Yamato Transport office located at the fire station bus stop. Now let's dive into our three-day itinerary. We're starting our sightseeing days around 9 a.m. Day one, first things first, purchasing our three-day Mount Fuji passes we're buying them at the Mount Fuji train station since we're renting a place nearby. Let's get started. Take Fuji-Q Railway to Shimoyoshida Station to visit Mount Arakura Shenjin Shrine and Choreito Pagoda. We're starting from Mount Fuji Station near our accommodation. If you're just entering the area coming by train from Shinjuku, you can stop at Shimoyoshida Station on your way towards Kawaguchiko. Or if you rode a highway bus from Tokyo to Kawaguchiko Station, you can catch the train at Kawaguchiko Station and ride it to Shimoyoshida. 
The Mount Fuji Pass covers unlimited local train rides, so you can go back and forth as much as you want between Otsuki Station and Kawaguchiko Station. From Shimoyushida Station, hike uphill to Choreto Pagoda, at least 20 minutes. You can either climb the stairs or take the gentler winding road. If you didn't manage to use the toilet at the train station, there is one located partway up the hill. Our family made it to the top by around 10.30 a.m. and the line for the observation deck for Choreto Pagoda was super long. Since George had already captured the view at sunrise, we decided not to wait in the long line for the observation deck. George walked to the pagoda in the early morning since the trains weren't running yet. He got there around 4.45 a.m. and there were already other people waiting with their cameras. We visited in April and were fortunate to get a beautiful, bright, sunny day. The day before was super cloudy with no view of Mount Fuji. The best time of year for clear skies is the winter. After enjoying the view, walk back down the hill. You can stop at Mount Arakura Senjin Shrine before proceeding the rest of the way down to Shimonishida Station. Ride the train to Kawaguchiko Station. From Kawaguchiko Station, take the Red Line sightseeing bus to the Pleasure Cruiser ropeway entrance. Or if the bus is full, you can walk one kilometer, approximately 14 minutes from Kawaguchiko Station to the Mount Fuji Panoramic Ropeway. Both the ropeway and the Lake Kawaguchiko sightseeing boat up here are located very near each other. We got in line for the ropeway around 1.45 p.m. and the wait was estimated at 70 minutes. The Mount Fuji Panorama Ropeway is included in the Mount Fuji Pass. You just show your pass as your ticket. You don't need to get separate tickets at the machines or counter. If you purchase tickets separately, they are 1,000 yen per adult round trip. From the observation deck, you can see both Kawaguchiko and Mount Fuji. After enjoying the view, you can ride the ropeway back down. There is also a walking path. However, there was a sign warning of a recent bear sighting on the pathway. Cross the street and walk about three minutes to the boat pier. The Lake Kawaguchiko sightseeing boat up here is included in the Mount Fuji Pass. If you purchase a ticket separately, it's 1,000 yen per adult. Enjoy the views of Mount Fuji from Lake Kawaguchi. Then continue the same direction on the Red Line bus to Kawaguchiko Natural Living Center at Oishi Park, which is the final bus stop. This is a famous spot for viewing Mount Fuji across Lake Kawaguchi. You can also grab a snack at the Natural Living Center. However, the ice cream counter was closed when we went there at 5 p.m. At the end of the day, backtrack the same way you came by bus. Double check the schedule so you don't miss the last bus of the day. The Red Line bus also stops at a variety of museums, including Kawaguchi Co. Museum of Art and the Music Forest Museum. Day two. Take local route bus towards Gotemba, A or C, from either Kawaguchiko Station or Mount Fuji Station. Ride approximately 23 minutes to Oshino Hakai. Enjoy the beauty of the crystal clear eight sacred ponds with Mount Fuji towering in the background. You can also sit down for a snack or do a little shopping. From Oshino Hakai, continue on the Gotemba Line bus, A or C, approximately 15 minutes to Yamanakako, Asahi Gauka. From here, you can ride the Yamanakako tourist boat, Swan Lake. It's included in the Mount Fuji Pass. If you purchase a ticket separately, it's 1,100 yen per adult. When we visited in April, the hours were 9.30 to 4 p.m., but they can vary. The large swan boat wasn't running that day, but we were able to take a smaller boat. After the boat ride, if you have time, you can eat across the street at Pika Yamanakako. If you'd like to visit the Gotemba Premium Outlets, you can continue an additional 57 minutes on the same bus line. Instead, we took the bus back from Yamanakako Asahi Gauka and got off at Fujikyu Highlands. Admission to Fujikyu Highlands Amusement Park is free for anyone. Only the rides require payment. The Mount Fuji Pass provides one free ride. At the entrance ticket counter, I presented the Mount Fuji Pass and the attendant gave me a ride ticket that I showed at the ride. Even if you just want to enter the park, you do need to go up and get your free admission ticket. If you want to ride multiple rides, you could opt for a one day pass or an afternoon pass from 2 p.m. onward. Otherwise, each ride has its own ticketing machine. 
Please check the hours of operation. When we visited, it was open from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and closed on Thursdays. Our kids have been super excited to visit Thomas Land at Fuji Q. The rides in Thomas Land each cost either 4 or 500 yen. Or you could opt to purchase the one day or afternoon pass to Fuji Q to use for unlimited rides in Thomas Land. That's what we got for both our five-year-old and our three-year-old and then I just purchased individual tickets for any of the rides that they needed me to go on with them. After Fuji Q Highlands, return to your accommodation via train or bus. Day three, you might want to visit Mount Fuji Fifth Station to take in the views from Mount Fuji. This is easiest to do during the hiking months from early July to early September when multiple buses are running. If available, take Climbers Bus M Line bound for Fuji Subaru Fifth Station. During the off season, ask at the bus ticket office whether there is a bus running to the fifth station. There wasn't one the day we hoped to visit in April. Enjoy the view from the fifth station. Return by bus to Kaoguchiko Station. Take either the Blue Line Motosuko Sightseeing Bus or the Shin Fuji Station bus. Get off at stop 80 for the Narusawa Ice Cave. The Mount Fuji Pass provides free admission to the ice cave. I showed my pass and I got a paper ticket. Otherwise, the price is 350 yen per adult. Kids under four years old are not allowed to enter the cave. After the ice cave, I had planned to walk 14 minutes to the Fugaku Wind Cave. However, the Blue Line bus was pulling up just as I reached the bus stop, so I hopped on board and rode at one stop, getting off at Fugaku Fuketsu Wind Cave. From the bus stop, the Wind Cave is just a short walk. Admission is free with the Mount Fuji Pass, just show the pass. Otherwise, it's 350 yen per adult. The setting is really beautiful among the trees. After visiting the Wind Cave, I crossed the street to catch the Green Line sightseeing bus bound for Kawaguchiko. Ride approximately 18 minutes to Saiko Iyashi no Sato Nenba, which is an outdoor museum of reconstructed traditional Japanese houses. You'd be able to see Mount Fuji on a clear day. Admission is 500 yen per adult. The Mount Fuji Pass gives a 50 yen discount, so I paid 450 yen when entering. After walking around for about an hour, I caught the Green Line bus at the same bus stop bound for Kawaguchiko Station. The bus offers a pretty view of Saiko and Kawaguchiko, but the winding road could also cause motion sickness. Also located on the Green Line is Pika Resort Lake Saiko, where our family is camping after we're done with our three-day Mount Fuji Pass. From Kawaguchiko Station, head to your accommodation or back to Shinjuku if it's time for you to return to Tokyo. Is the Mount Fuji Pass worth it? The Mount Fuji Pass is super convenient to use on trains and buses, especially compared to paying by cash. Using an IC card is also convenient. It was also nice not needing to purchase individual tickets for each tourist site. Price-wise, the three-day Mount Fuji Pass at 10,000 yen per adult came out to just about the same as paying separately for each of the buses, trains, and attractions we visited. It would have saved us money getting the pass if we had been able to visit Mount Fuji Fifth Station. I hope this shows that it is possible to tour the Mount Fuji Five Lakes area using public transportation. Keep in mind that the trains and buses do not run as frequently as in Tokyo, so it's important to check the timetable and know when the next bus is coming. Missing your bus could mean waiting for an extra hour. Also, many of the trains passing through are limited express trains, so it was sometimes a very long wait for a local train. In those cases, I opted to take a bus or just walk. Also during the springtime, the sightseeing buses have been super crowded. We share tons here on Kensho Quest to help you travel throughout Japan with ease. Up next, you may want to watch our guide to the Hakone Free Pass. Hakone is another popular destination near Tokyo for getting views of Mount Fuji. Please subscribe for more travel tips and inspiration.